Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Leave It to Baker, and this is that uh, Hollywood Stories I was telling you about, the new series. Um, first of all, uh, it's <clears throat> been about a week uh, since uh, my last vlog when uh, when my buddy Randy had passed, um, and yeah, it's it's been tough. But uh, I want to, I really want to thank everybody who left comments and my friends who actually called me and text messaged me about it. Um, I really appreciate that. Um, you know, he, when you know somebody for 35 plus years, you have a lot of memories. And, you know, that was just one memory on that day that had popped in my head. I mean, I had only found out from, uh, from his wife maybe about an hour or so before that. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, it was still uh, fresh in my mind and it just popped in my head, that memory. But in the last week, I have just, I, I have all these memories keep popping up, like one after another and another. And I'm like, hey, wait a minute, why? I should be making uh, Randy Parco stories instead of Hollywood stories. Because we, <laughs> we had a lot of stories. Oh my God. Anyway, but this one here, um, this one is about my time uh, working at uh, Paramount Pictures. And. Um, it does mention Harvey Weinstein, and you're probably thinking to yourself, well, how could you go from Randy Parco, who's got a beautiful heart, to Harvey Weinstein? Well, it's technically not all about Harvey Weinstein, but he is mentioned in this vlog, so check this out. Okay, so there were many uh, occasions where I worked at Paramount Pictures, um, like I had mentioned before, and... Uh, I would be called in sometimes just for a day, and it would be at uh, at Paramount Pictures for working for a producer or or somebody uh, executive of some status. And um, there was a producer I was called in to work for for just one day. I guess apparently his assistant was was out sick. Um, I want to say it was Scott Rudin, but I don't think it was. But it was somebody of of his uh, let's just say his demeanor. So um, so I was called in. And, uh, and I worked there and uh, I was doing odd jobs for him uh, throughout the morning. And he had popped in, introduced himself, and he said, I got to take off and go to a meeting. I'll be back in a little bit. So I'm working away. He calls me on the phone in about a half an hour and says, hey, I need you to get a script together for me. It's on my desktop. Um, it's a, I'm not going to mention the script, but anyway, it was a, it was a script that uh, I needed to uh, print up for him. Okay, so I did that. He comes back, and uh, and when he comes back, um, I don't know, maybe like 45 minutes later, I hand him the script, and he takes it, and he looks at it, and he goes into his office, and about f two minutes later, he goes, well, what the f*** is this? And he comes out, and he goes, he goes, this isn't the goddamn script that I asked for. I asked for a different script. And I said, uh, no, you didn't, actually. And he said, yes, I did. And he walked back into his office. God damn it. Fucking hell. Blah, blah, blah. He was going on and on. And my blood was starting to boil. And I was at that point where I had been working for different producers. And I kind of know how some of them are. Their heads are a lot bigger than their bodies, if you know what I mean. So I walked in there. <laughs> I looked at him and I go, look, I am a fucking temp for one day. I'm here to help you. If you don't want my help, I'm gone. It's up to you. And he just changed his tune like that. I was quite surprised that I stood up to him, number one. And number two, he changed his tune. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I, a rough day and this and this and blah, blah. I, yeah, so, um, yeah, anyway, can I just get a different script? Uh, let me tell you which one I need. And so he changed his tune really quick. Um, so that was fun. Um, and in fact, he had called the uh, temp agency later that day to mention that uh, he was hoping that I'd come back again. <laughs> I wasn't going to go back, but I thought that that was kind of unique that, uh, that he would do that. Okay, so um, one of the days that I'd gone there was to work for uh, Susan Glatzer. Now, if I had mentioned that this, this vlog would be about Susan Glatzer, you'd say, who the hell is that? Anyway, she was the senior vice president of uh, worldwide acquisitions at Paramount Pictures. So I was 
filling in for her temp for the day. Hi, kitty. He's coming to say hi. <laughs> so I was filling in for the day. And, um, and then I was called in the next day as well because apparently he just scratched the hell out of me. Apparently I had done uh, a really cool job or something. And so um, I was there the next day. Well, the next day, the actual assistant came in. Um, her name was Ifuru Flowers. I love the name. She was a really great person. Um, and apparently I was called in over and over and over. So I thought, well, maybe this is going to be a full-time gig. Well, I was told on the side that possibly I was going to be filling in and taking over Ifuru's position because she was going to move on to become a producer. And I thought, well, this is pretty cool. I, uh, I'm going to get a chance to work with the senior vice president of acquisitions at Paramount Pictures. This is a good gig. So um, Susan takes off. I think it was the, the following week, she takes off for the uh, Toronto Film Festival. So she's at the Toronto Film Festival and I'm working there with Ifuru. And, um, and then a couple of days later, I'm gonna put this on pause for a second. Okay, I'm back. The cat was seriously like making dough on my lap and it was killing my, <laughs> killing my legs. So anyway, <laughs> I had to shoo him off. So, um, so I'm working there, and uh, and Susan is at uh, she's at the Toronto Film Festival, and so I was like, hey, if I'm gonna get this position, I kind of want to kind of butter her up, kind of do something cool, and so I went and I bought, I bought this, I went and bought that Raiders of the Lost Ark um, film poster. And it was an original poster, it was a couple hundred bucks, got it framed. Um, I found it at a place in Hollywood. There's a guy who had sold uh, movie posters, real movie posters. Ones like that are the, originally they came folded. Um, and so I was like, oh, she's going to dig this. And so, you know, because it was a Paramount film. So I got it together and I come in and Fru was like, well, you're not going to believe this. And I go, what? She's like, um... Susan was let go and I'm like what are you what what are you talking about and she's like well apparently the big film that year was uh, thank you for smoking and um, and she made a deal to buy thank you for smoking well I guess after this deal in the middle of the night Fox Searchlight was in the elevator with whoever owned the film and they made a nice little handshake deal and they got the film. Well, the brass up above wasn't too pleased the fact that she lost that film. So they let her go. And um, at least that's the story I heard. Which in turn meant that I no longer had a position there or at least a, a future position. So I was a little bummed about that. But I kept the poster for myself obviously. Um, so being there, I got a chance to obviously, like I'd mentioned before, meet other producers and whatnot. Um, there was also a chance uh, through a friend of mine that I would go to screenings. They would always, he would always get these tickets for uh, pre-screenings of films that would come out. And I was in Pasadena for a screening of some film. Obviously, it wasn't that memorable because I don't even remember which one it was. I do remember that Harvey and his brother Bob were the producers for it. And when I had walked up, they were both standing there. And I was kind of like in awe because they were like the big, big wigs at that time. And I walked up and I said, hey, how you doing? Uh, my name is Matt Baker. I just wanted to introduce myself and say hi. I'm really looking forward to this. Obviously, I wasn't because I still can't remember the name of it. But um, but they just Harvey just kind of shunned me. He was like, mm, okay. And Bob was like, oh, thanks. I really appreciate it. But Harvey, he's, I could tell he was kind of an idiot at that time. And it proves that, yeah, he's a real big idiot. But um, yeah, so that was the time that I bumped into Harvey Weinstein and his brother Bob. Um, I don't think I have any more story of that today. But... I may have a story, you know, I just pop in my head. I do have a story related to 
the screenwriter of that film. And that'll be in the next vlog. Lawrence Kasdan. You got to check that one out. All right. Talk to you later. Peace out.